Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. So we're going to be talking about some new CSS properties, text shadow, border style, and box shadow, because they can really make the design of our websites look a lot better. So there's some setup that I really need to highlight for today's challenge, uh, because without it, you won't get this to work, especially if you choose languages that don't <clears throat> excuse me, that don't have um, the traditional alphabet that we have in English and Spanish, for example, Russian or Japanese. You can choose whatever languages you'd like, by the way. You don't have to choose these four. You can choose whatever languages you would like to say hello in. Okay, so what do we actually need in order to get set up? Well, we need a new folder in our unit three folder and our index .html and style.css files. So as you can see, I've already done that. So I'm going to open them so that we can easily see. And then in our index file, of course, as usual, we want our HTML shell. So let me add that. And don't forget your link tag for style, because without it, we're not going to see any changes to our design. The other thing that I really need you to have is in step two, and it's this tag, it's the meta char set tag. And what this says is it basically says we want to be able to use all of these different letters from other languages. So we're also going to put this in the head section of our uh, web page. That way we can choose whatever language we want. Now, as you can see by this um, example that we have divisions within our page. We might have an English section, a Spanish section, so on and so forth. And so we might want to start thinking about using div tags more often. For example, if I wanted to do the English one, I might say something like English container for the div, and that has both a title that says the word that we want as well as what the language is below. So this is how we group people in English. Um, now I want to do an example that's not English. So I'll use Korean this time. Um, and I don't actually know how to say hello in Korean. So Google Translate, it's our friend today. So type in hello and then choose your language, um, Korean. I don't even know how to pronounce this, but <laughs> we're going to move it over and put it in between our each one, like so. Um, so if I zoom out, uh, why is this not loading? Let me refresh the page. So hopefully that'll kind of kickstart things. There we go. So there you can see we have our preview of how you say hello in Korean. That's great. So now let's play around with some of the new CSS properties. So the first one that I want to point out is text shadow. Text shadow is, as you can see by this example, a way of providing a shadow behind our words. And the way we use it is with this property, text shadow. And now there are some things that come after this that I want to explain. But before we do that, let me actually write down this first one. So let's say we want to put it behind the Korean letters. So we go text shadow, and then we want to figure out what these uh, things after our colon do. So it's the H shadow, the V shadow, the blur radius, and then color. So the first two are mandatory. You have to have some, some numbers there. And then the other stuff you can decide whether or not you want it. So if we go through this example, here we have 2px, 2px. So it's to the right by two pixels and down by two pixels. Here is negative 10, 10px. So that's like saying to the left 10 pixels and down 10 pixels. So be really careful about your negative signs because that will change the direction that we see our text shadow. So let's try that. I'll give this 
2px, 2px. And we expect this to be down and to the right. So when I save that, you can see that I have text shadow. And maybe that's hard to see, so let's give it some color. I'll make it a red text shadow, like so. Ta-da! And that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll keep that. All right, let's take a look at another property. Um, let's do border style. So around each of our HTML elements, we can actually have a border, and this makes things look a little cleaner. So here you can see that you can put borders on all sides, on the bottom, to the left. You can have lots of different styles as well. So let's first practice using border style. And maybe, oops, maybe I want a border around just my H1. Okay, so we'll just add this here, and maybe I want it to be solid. So you just say, I want my border style to be solid. So that's around just the H1 element. Is it possible to have a border around just the paragraph? For sure. Let's do a different style here, like dashed. You can have lots of fun with all of the different border styles. And maybe you want one around the div tag, right, that contains our greeting. So maybe you want, um, I don't know, dotted for this. So when we save that, you'll see that we have a border around the whole thing. I like the border around the whole thing, so let me get rid of these, like so. Ta-da. All right, some other things that I wanna show you about borders is that they can have color so and width. So if you want it to be thicker, you just use border width. Here's border color. So if you don't want it to be black, maybe you want it to match the shadow, you can go with border color make it red as well. RGB is still our friend. Okay, so maybe I want it like that. All right, last property I want to show you today is box shadow. And this is really useful for making sure that certain things pop on our websites. So you can kind of see like these examples are floating. That's what it looks like. And these shadows are what is giving that appearance of floating, kind of 3D popping off the page. So that's box shadow, and box shadow actually works very similar to text shadow. The position of the shadow can be found after our property, like so. Okay, so if we wanna add a shadow to our div element, um, you can go with box shadow, and then maybe we want you know, 10 px and 10 px like so, and we can add that. You can see it's a huge shadow. If you don't want it to be so large, you can give it you know, a tiny shadow, 1px. It's a little bit better, um, but it's harder to see. Maybe you want something in between, like 5px, and that could work. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Of course, remember we have like text align if you want it to be in the very middle, like so. Right. Um, maybe you want to add more numbers for a blur radius, so this makes it less sharp of a shadow. Um, let's see, if I do that, what happens? You can see that it's kind of blurry. Uh, if we make this negative, we expect it to be to the left now. If we make this one negative, it'll go up. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Have fun and really think about what makes it easier for your users to use. All right, let me know if you have any questions.